Hey, what's up guys on YouTube? This is 3D Bonfire back with an amazing tutorial. And this time it is all about interiors and lighting on my Patreon. So there will be an in-depth course where you can learn all about these ones. But here on YouTube, I will also give you a short lesson where we create this beautiful Venetian blind. So this is really nice when you put it into your architecture and light your room. Let's start with the modeling of this element. But of course on Patreon, you will get the full package. So I will show you more how you create your room, how you light it, how to make it beautiful. Also how you can make stuff like these ones. So this will also be a topic, I think next lesson. But now I will start with the architecture course and we will start to create a simple rig for these Venetian blinds. And why don't we just start with it? All right, guys, finally in Cinema 4D, I think we are already on a minute here. So I don't want to waste your time. Let's get started. This is a room that is already a little bit more developed. So there is a nice stairway in it. I also did some cool curved glass here with Venetian blinds that go around this yeah, around this circular element, but we will focus on a simple one like these ones. Oh, I think I just didn't make them visible. Okay, what a bad start. So let's just see these ones. You can see you can adjust them. Let's just open this one. Let's go into them. And of course you can just go into your coordinates and switch the angle of them. Okay, so this is quite helpful to play with your light. And I think we will make a longer version and maybe a shorter version. So you can place them into your scene however you like it. Just give it more variation like I did here. So we will also create some furniture. Let me just open these pictures once again. Where are they here? So of course you will learn how to model a shelf, a beautiful shelf here. And of course you will also learn how to create some simple elements like these modern vases with different textures on them or just some classic pottery here. I think sometimes you just need some elements in your scenes, right? Maybe we will also concentrate on create some magazines and books and put them yeah, just in place. So maybe this will be also a lesson. Of course, I will show you how to build simple furniture like these ones and make some nice elements like these with the plants on it. And yes, so <laughs> lots of stuff to learn there but as i already mentioned now we will concentrate on these venetian blinds and uh, let's just get back to cinema 4d okay so i think we should just orientate ourselves on something like this one okay so i guess we just go into a new scene i think this would be a clean start here so why don't we just put a plane as a floor into it and i guess we could also go to the content browser and just search for people and just put this dude in it, for example. Of course, you can also go if you're just more into um, yeah into some puppetry and uh, stuff like these. You could also use this one. But hey, we have some realistic people, so why don't we use it? All right, perfect. And I think this room is a little bit small. So let's just go to the attributes to the object. So this is four by four. I think we want to have a width of, let's say, 10 meters and just put it also to 10 by 10 meters maybe and we will just pretend like there will be our opening to a balcony so maybe you know what already starting with a bad habit saying too much maybe all right so let's just pretend there is a balcony okay and i think this is our living room and you can go through an opening here where we put the glass in it and the venetian blinds and this will be our main source for lighting the room with beautiful sunlight i guess we just want to make this one a bit bigger so why don't we just put this one also to 10 meters not 100 but 10 meters okay that's perfect so i just play with it a little bit i would say this can be 30 and why don't we just put it up 15 so it is perfectly on the ground and I think we don't need to make this one so huge. It doesn't really matter. So let's just say this one would be two meters. All right. Okay, perfect. So I think it is already time to just turn this one into an editable object. And I just go to poly mode. And I think I just want to press KL to make some cuts into it. So this will be like an inset for the frame, for the metal frame of our glass. And I would say I just put it... I mean, it doesn't really matter, but to be exact, I hold down shift and then you get these points. Okay, so I can put it exactly in the middle. It's not so relevant, but why don't we just 
be mathematically super correct. So I press UL to get the ring selection, or it's called loop selection. I select this ring and now I hold down MS. All right, this is the bevel and I just give it a slight bevel here. Let me just be precise and let's say this will be 10 centimeters. Uh, is 10 enough? No, I just put it to 12, for example. Okay, I think that's good. So now I just want to go there hold down D and just make an indent here. Maybe I just go down 10 centimeters. No, that's way too much. So put it to minus five. I think this is enough. Okay, perfect. So we have a beautiful indent here. Maybe I just get rid of the outer polygons here. We don't really need them. Okay, perfect. So now I think it is time to build our metal frame. All right, so this is our floor element where we put in the metal frame. So why don't we just select this polygon UP for extracting it. So this should be a new element with just this polygon. That's perfect. Let's just offset it by, let's see. So 15.01. So it is just slightly, <laughs> you can barely notice it, but it is just slightly above the surrounding element here so it doesn't lay just on top of it okay so i would say we want to have a subdivision of maybe five openings so let me just check this one you can see between the glass i just delete this one there are these yeah like metal frames that go up and i just put these ones to one two three six to nine okay so we don't have to stick to this number i think i just want to select these two polygons and now i hold down mf i guess this is the edge cut and now i can say how many subdivisions i need and i think i just want to stick to nine let's see so maybe nine is a little bit too much in that case so just put it to seven i think seven is a good number for me okay that's perfect now i hold down u B, it's another ring selection. I select all of these ones. M, S, M, S again for the bevel. And now I just slightly bevel them, give them some thickness. And this is just to your liking. So I think this is too much. So I do it again. I think I just want to have it to something like four. No, I just put it to three. Sorry, put it to two. I think this can be really thin. Okay, that's cool. All right, nice. All right, so I think this is a good start. So maybe I just quickly go to create a new material here. I just want to give it some red color, get rid of the reflectance and just put it onto our element. No, that's the wrong element. Put it onto this one just to see it slightly better. Okay, so I select it and now, okay, I can notice that I don't have outer edges here. It doesn't have to be super precise. So I just hold down KL again and just make a cut here. Okay, so I have something to extrude. Let's also go to the back end here. And let's just do the same here. I would say something like that. That's perfect. Okay, cool. All right, so we should have something like this with these pieces we can extrude, but I think now I just want to make a new layer. So I switch to my layer manager here. I don't need the layer for the render people. So kill this one. And I just put, uh, let's call this one framing. And let's put it on a layer and let's call this one also framing. Let's just pretend we are precise and uh, work with exact named layers. So solo this one. All right, and I think before I will extrude these ones up, I guess I should make a slight border here also. So I think I just want to KL, use the knife again, and let's make a cut in the middle. Okay, I hold down shift to get these points. Now, this one will be also subdivided and I just go to, I think I would just want to go to this point, doing the same here and go to this point. Now, this is exactly mirrored to, from the left to the right. Okay, that's perfect. And I think now, could be the right time to extrude these ones up or you know what i hold down ul and go to stop at boundary loop and now i just hold down shift and select these two lines here go to my scaling and i just want to put them slightly into it so i think we just want to have a bigger frame around it okay that seems to be perfect and now I hold down STRGA, select everything. I press D and just bring it up. Let me just go out of the layering and let's just go into the lines mode. I just want to put it up to 
somewhere around the floor element. Okay, maybe I just want to put it a little bit higher. That seems to be fine. All right, cool. Go back into it. And now I just want to select all of these elements, not these ones. Sorry, that was already a mistake. So hold down shift to get rid of these polygons. Now I just select the elements I want to put up. All right. So let me just quickly do this. The next one should be the last. Okay, that's nice. All right, so now hold down STRG to just extrude them up. When I hold down also shift, I can go in increments of a whole centimeter. So I just go to, for example, two meters. And I think this is a good start. All right, so this is two meters high. I just want to put the guy there. I think it's one. He is, how big is he? It's one meter and 82 centimeters. I just want to check it. Of course, this opening is way too small. So I think an easy way would be to just go there, go to points. And for example, we can select these points, go to mesh axis, open the axis center. You could also dock it into your screen. And now don't put the axis to all points, but to the selected points executed. Now, if you go to your object mode back, you have your axis there. And you could, for example, hold down STRT, duplicate it, make a minus in the Y axis. And now you just duplicated it. Okay. So I guess we just select both of them, right click and say connect objects and delete. So we have a new framing, go to point mode, STRG A, select all points, right click and optimize it. Perfect. All right, so we could go on with the glass and the Venetian blinds, but I think I just recognized a small mistake that happens all the time to me. So let me just zoom through this wall. Where is it? Can I just look inside of it? You can see there are two polygons that shouldn't really be there. It happened in the extrusion. That was my fault when I duplicated the framing and then collapsed it into a connect objects and delete. I should have gotten rid of these polygons. So you know what? I will just go through them zoom in and just kill these polygons and then we can continue. And I can also tell you why this is relevant. So when I hold down UL and I just want to go around the loop here, UL, you can see that um, because of these polygons inside of it, I will not get a clear loop around this framing. So this is just an error. So that's why I just have to spend this minute and I just kill these polygons. All right, after you killed these inside polygons here, hold down STRG A, select all of them. And you can also see there is another mistake. So when we just flip this one with the minus Y axis, the normals got inverted. So just right click and just say align normals. All the normals should just face outwards. Now right click and optimize it once again. And now I think we have a clear model. So I just think we should enhance this just a little bit more. So when we put glasses between these framings, we should go with UL into the poly mode and select, for example, these two loops. Let me just see it on one example here. Hold down I for inner extrude, make an inner extrude. Be sure these ones are connected. So put it over 90. Let's see. So now they are connected and then hold down D and just put it in. And you can see now we will have a beautiful framing that goes around the metal frame and you can put your glass inside of it. So let's just do this one for all of them. All right. So let's do the selection for all of these framings and just go back that you get rid of this index root we just did right now. So now we just select all of these ones. So go from left to right or right to left or just randomly pick it however you like to organize yourself, just be sure you don't select the wrong polygons and go around it. And this barely took more than 10 seconds. So we selected all the relevant polygons. Now hold down I now make the extrude inner for all of them. Put it for example to let's see, I think this is a good value of 2.4. Okay. It's not really relevant. So put it 2.5 or whatever you like. Now hold down D to get the extrude and now just extrude it slightly here. Can't go too far. Otherwise it will penetrate through itself. So just go in slightly and just be sure you don't create caps. And now I think we should have a beautiful indent on all of these framings and you could put some glass into it. So 
that looks so professional, right? And let's just see how we can do the glass here. So I guess we just want to select these two polygons and maybe, no, I'm sorry. We will continue, select all of these polygons, just the inside two polygons, of course. Let's just select them. Let's continue the selection. Let's just continue it. And now I hold down UP to split them into a new framing. Let's call this one glass. Let's get rid of the material. Now hold down I to inner extrude them ever so slightly. Just be sure you have a safety zone around it. And I think this is already too much. So I just hold down I. Now I hold down UI to select the other polygons, delete them. And now I have a clean glass that is laying inside of my framing without touching the border. I just need to select the glass and I just freeze the values here. And now I just can put a slight value inside of it to put it ever so slightly above the framing. And now this is laying inside of the framing without touching any of the other polygons. Let's just put it to minus one centimeter. That's enough. Okay, cool. Now this is my glass. I hold down D to extrude them. And you know what? I just go up to what's the value. Let's go up with it and just look inside of it. Go to somewhere around here without touching the framing. That's perfect. So now we have an exact glass inside of a frame and now we can go over to the venetian blinds all right guys and you know what we just make a little cut here and we'll continue in the second free youtube training where we finally built the venetian blinds so i think we did some good preparation with the metal framing here but now let's just continue in part two which will also be free on youtube so i hope to see you there thank you so much for listening so far and please if you just like these videos just think about to subscribe to my channel ring the bell and just give me a thumbs up or maybe you will even think about to become a patreon to get my full package of knowledge thank you so much see you in the second part bye guys